Now we'll go ahead and investigate the updraft trends for the line segment approaching the Phoenix area up in this area. And uh, we'll also compare a little bit with that of Western Pima County. So we have a lot of maps to go along and we'll also talk about some of the most useful products. So you can see as we go northeast, um, that line segment goes up and approaches uh, uh, the Phoenix area. We end at 11C. And almost immediately, you can see that the GLM flash extent density really starts spiking there in the last bit. And that it kind of comes out as a big red herring that something's going on. So how about the MRMS reflectivity at minus 10 degrees Celsius? Okay, we start off here, and this is the line segment of interest southwest of Phoenix. And you can see a lot of 35 dBC echoes. It's just low top stuff. And as time goes on, you can see that maybe just a little hair trigger, a little bit of 40 dBC pokes up right there, just southwest of Phoenix uh, in the last bit. So there's some trend. It's uh, just not as apparent. Meanwhile, the satellite, you can see bright yellow tops at 10 C. But as time goes on, they kind of wash out a little bit. And so they're shifting north of Phoenix, um, but just not as strong. So does that show up uh, in the... Uh, tracking mediogram? Yeah, it sure does. So take a look at this up here. The flash extent density is the most obvious. Uh, starting to spike after 1010Z. And then we have a secondary spike, a big one there, 1045 to 1050Z, right after that time. The uh, reflectivity at minus 10 shows a spike here at 1010, right around just before the uh, lightning starts to show. And it kind of waffles around, it dips a little bit, and then there's a, an increase up to 1050Z, uh, 1050Z right here. Yeah. Meanwhile, the GOES had cloud top cooling early before 10Z and then slow warming uh, thereafter. Now down in Pima County, here's Western Pima County, um, do we see the same trends? Okay, over time, it looks like it's pretty steady state. And the reason why I say that Okay, is that we do have lightning uh, of a particular density. It's not very high. It goes away a little bit, and then it comes back a little bit, and then it flops back and forth. Uh, the cloud top temperatures uh, roughly are the same, although there is a noted uh, increase or cooling in cloud top temperatures right there at the end. And the reflectivity at minus 10 you know, shows some 40 dBZ uh, echoes in western Pima County uh, south of the, of the bow. And there is a bow, but then they disappear a little bit. So overall, I'm seeing a conflicting signature. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the vorticity. So first of all, I wanted to take a look at the vorticity sheet along the front. And we'll take a look at the KIWA 88D and up in here in Maricopa County. And you can see this is where we're low enough now and we're late enough that the line, the gust front is close enough to the radar to see both sides. And you can see that uh, for that area of the gust front that's bowing back to the northwest, uh, there is some evidence of, of azimuthal shear uh, across that. So let's go ahead and close in. And so we'll pull up the close-up view with the TDWR in the lower left, uh, 88D velocity in the upper left. Early on, the 88D is a little bit too far away. And so we can see the, in, the outbounds, the flow going into the front from the warm side, but the radar skipping along the top end of the front on the other side, and it's not showing it that much. Uh, so we have to rely on the, on the TDWR. Unfortunately, there is one that's closer. And you can see now that there's uh, strong evidence of azimuthal shear in this part of the front that's kicking back a little bit, at least uh, viewed from the radar. And more importantly, as we loop it, the 88D with its fine resolution pencil thin beam uh, and quick updates, you can actually see the two-dimensional motions of turbulent features, uh, convective rolls and other turbulence in front of the uh, front and also behind the front. And now you can really see that there is strong vertical vorticity along that, um, both in the azimuthal shear as well as the motion of those two-dimensional features. The front is getting closer to the ADD and you start seeing the same kinds of azimuthal shear in the ADD but the, the beam width is a little bit wide. We're not picking up the, the two-dimensional features as well. We see the first onset of those two mesovortices way back, uh, actually about roughly here at 1040. Uh, you start seeing these multiple undulations 
all spaced about seven kilometers apart as I measured them. And uh, two of those undulations start becoming dominant by 1048, uh, right along uh, uh, I-17 north of Phoenix, and this one, and then this one. And those are the ones that really max out by 1054. There are outbounds in the TDWR 30 meters per second. And they continue on for uh, quite a while right there. Uh, we overlay the surface obs, and you can see that the background uh, shows, again, a region of sharp uh, shear. You can take a time to space, look at the mediograms to see how sharp that shear line is, and then convert that to a frontal width, if you will. And you'll see that the background conditions satisfy a situation of horizontal shearing instability. And, and that you see a roll-up of these multiple undulations kind of verifies that or helps support that idea. Uh, as you go on, then a couple become dominant. And later on, you have two main tracks. And the southern one actually gets quite intense with outbounds from the TDWR approaching 60 knots. Now, I do provide a link uh, to a talk that I gave for the Storm of the Month webinar series that talks about the origins of the horizontal shearing instability and how to uh, detect it more easily.